<laughs> Let's talk about Frogger. Frogger is this amazing new card. It's the most fun thing I've played it for a while. A lot of people love it. But how exactly does the comp work? Like people have played this card in millions of different ways. We see massive boards suddenly just appear out of nowhere. What is the exact math behind it? And what would be the ideal Frogger comp? Like how would you get the maximum amount of stats and the biggest units? How do you build Frogger? We know how to build a Mom Bear comp. It's just a Mom Bear and a bunch of beasts. We know how to build Goldrin. Goldrin, Mom Bear, Fellow Beasts, and Macaw. But what about Frogger? This Frogger isn't just Macaw, Frogger and Beast, because that is pretty inconsistent. Or is it just a full Death Rattle board with, with, with Frogger? Because then the Death Rattle keeps bouncing. Do you want Macaw or Baron? What is better? How do you transition? So all of those questions I will try to answer in this video. Sit back and enjoy the show. And if you enjoy the show, I don't know why I'm here. I don't even have music. Why am I wearing these? If you enjoyed the show, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I make a bunch of guides and content for us and battle guns. Let's start our an analytics fancy program that we're going to use to measure and calculate everything. <laughs> Paints. I mean, what did you expect? So Frogger, how does it work? It's a death rattle that bounces, meaning if you have a board of beasts, doesn't matter what your board looks like, one Frogger doesn't do anything. It's plus two plus two on a beast that maybe goes to more beasts. If it cycles like five times, the Frogger ends up being plus ten plus ten extra stats. So essentially it's like a mini Goldrin early on. That's why Frogger is such a strong card. But it doesn't scale. It's just like one Frogger means that you just get plus two plus two on potentially every beast. If the you get really lucky with the death rattle bouncing to the right targets being hit, otherwise it's less stats. So it's like a, a small RNG gold run. So death rattle just bounces and that's it. So that's not that good, right? The, the only way you upgrade this is if you somehow exponentially grow. And people figured out that with Baron or with Macaw, the stats start to multiply and things start to chain and go completely out of control. So how exactly does that work? So if you have a Baron, very simply put, we have our Frogger here, and let's say we have a couple beasts, right? Doesn't matter what your beasts are, and this is our Baron. Baron is a, let's make him a cube, or a rectangle in this case. So this dude dies, and the Death Rattle triggers twice, so it doesn't just go to one dude, but let's say it goes to two dudes, right? Then if this guy dies, Death Rattle goes to two dudes again. Let's say it goes to this guy and this guy. So now we have three Death Rattles. From one we went to two, then we went to three. Now this is gonna ramp up plus one plus one plus one. Like if this guy dies, it goes from three to four, right? Because again, the same concept. But if we get lucky and it hits this dude, which has two death rattles already, it sends out four death rattles. So then we go from three suddenly to five. Yes, we go from three to five. So as you can see, here's where the RNG comes into play. So if the death rattles are stacking multiple death rattles on one unit, if that dies, it grows way more exponential than if the death rattles like bounce around a little bit. So this is why a death rattle beast comp is amazing, because eventually, at some point, multiple death rattles will land on one unit. Like this unit, for example, according to my calculations, has like two death rattles as well. So does this guy. So guaranteed, whichever dies here, let's say they summon more dudes, right? I mean, you can see the process. Basically, it starts to multiply, and normally it's, it, it starts off slow, like plus, plus two, plus two, plus four, plus four, plus six, plus six. And then the, the smaller your board gets, or the more death rattles you get, the more it starts to rapidly grow and grow because eventually you'll have like 10 death rattles on one unit let's say that unit dies then you get 20 death rattles all, all across your unit spread it it is mental things can go nuts that is just a single baron by the way one baron can achieve this so this is the importance for baron in a fur comp fur comp without baron doesn't do anything with a baron oh my god so you gotta protect your Baron at all costs, uh, so you wanna have as many beasts taunted as possible. So if you just have a bunch of Death Rattle beasts, you want as many Death Rattles as possible. You don't even need Mama Bear, because as you can see, things get out of hand real quick. Just find a Baron, bunch of taunted beasts, and single Frogger or two Froggers. And if you get lucky and the Death Rattles land well, then you'll grow a lot faster earlier on. Like at the start, it's already a coin flip to determine how fast you're gonna scale, because if this Frogger dies, uh, if both death rattle lands on two different units, then well, you only multiply it by two. And then if one of these dies, again, it's gonna multiply by two, right? Uh, but let's say both of them land on the same unit and it dies, then well, it's already four. So then you're scaling already double. <laughs> so then we ask ourselves the question, how can we guarantee this, that our scaling is so much more like faster, right? 
And currently, I don't see a way. Like, if the less beasts you play, well, the, the sooner the chain stops. And the less beasts you have, if the chain stops, your board is dead. So you want to have as many beasts as possible to, like, increase the odds of a keep on chaining and chaining and chaining. That means that the odds of two buffs or multiple buffs landing on one unit early on is lower. But that should make up for it. I think we have some math wizard watching right now that could probably, like, do the math on what, how, what the odds are or how big the unit can get if you have like two beasts or three beasts with maybe two death rattles compared to five or six beasts like how big your board is gonna get i'm pretty sure the more beasts the bigger your board is gonna get so okay <laughs> if you're still following that's how the baron situation works so what about macaw macaw essentially does the same as baron baron doubles a battle uh, death rattle and so does macaw so let's say we have our frog and we got our macaw which is gonna be a triangle I should probably switch the order here, so what happens if Macaw triggers the frog? Well, the death rattle from frog just goes onto another unit, right? But it also can still die, and then the second death rattle goes off. But that's where it stops. So it only triggers the death rattle one more time. So you have two death rattles, but now if something dies, it only pops once, right? So it doubles your initial stats, but that's it. Macaw just doubles once. Baron keeps on doubling every death rattle. Makai is once. So Makai is a lot worse, so don't get baited too baited by Makai's early on. Find the Baron. Makai doesn't do shit. Where Makai does do shit is if the death rattles are stacked on one unit, let's say uh, we have a Baron and things have been bouncing, and you have one unit with like 10 death rattles, then Makai is still like a Baron would double it. And the interesting part is that Macaw can trigger itself. So if any death rattles land on Macaw because it is a beast, it can hit and trigger onto itself. And as you can see, Macaw Baron also amplifies the process. So if we have a Baron in play and we hit Macaw, we have one, two death rattles, and if it dies, three, four. So right off the bat, we go from one to four. So the exponential growth is insane but that's only on the initial macaw attack from there on it's again the baron stuff that we talked about so the macaw is only like one extra boost within the process not something that keeps on chaining so that's why i'm not super convinced on the macaw frogger belt so macaw goldrim buffs your entire board right macaw frogger isn't a good initial push but it's not like build defining the macaw is good but it's not necessary if you have the baron and the frogger that's more than good enough in short to recap you have a mom bear comp right you find frogger and you have a bunch of death rattle beasts and you find macaw should you pivot with your baron beast board into beasts with no death rattles just find like frogger and then macaw Probably not. You're actually gonna get a lot less stats that way. It is better to just leave the Maka out and do Frogger and a bunch of Death Rattles because of what I just illustrated. But there is a big but. Obviously, Maka has a lot of potential, and I'll, I'll show you how to actually make a Maka work in this comp. Because here's the thing Baron is kept. Uh, what does that mean? You only have a limited amount of beasts on your board, right? If every beast is dead, the Frogger Death Rattle is nowhere to go. So you, as soon as all your Death Rattles trigger, and let's say your opponent is like massive elementals or dragons or whatever and you can't outstat it then you're lost again you gotta get lucky that your buffs bound around a lot uh, and that's it you're capped out all you can do is find the golden baron maybe blue, a couple better death rattle beasts a golden frogger find reborn stuff that's about it but where you can go infinite is with the macaw because macaw isn't limited to how many beasts you have it can more than exponentially multiply death rattles i don't know if more than exponentially is a mathematical term but with exponentially i always just think the number multiplied by itself but it's more like a golden macaw golden baron i'll show you what the actual uh, size can be so this is just a, a normal example let's say you have a normal macaw with uh, a normal frogger and a baron, right? Like the most basic shit. Nothing is tripled. The frogger dies because it has taunt and goes on to Macaw twice. So we went from 2-2 two, two stats to 4-4 four, four stats, right? It just doubled. Then Macaw attacks. So then it goes from 4, it triggers the death rattle, so it goes on to itself again, but with baron it's double. So instead of going to 8, it gets another 4 because it's barren, so it goes to 12. So it goes from 2 to 4 to 12. Actually, I should say from 0, because the macaw starts with 0 buffs, right? From 0 to 4 to 12. Then if it triggers again the macaw, the 12 buffs becomes 36, I believe. Basically, it's multiplied by 3. So again, 36, if this triggers itself, it's gonna get 36 twice added onto itself, which is 108. 
And how many times has the Macaw attacked to gain plus 108? It has attacked once for plus 4 for 4, twice, 3, 4 times. And if it attacks again, well, this 300, what is this, 21? So, yeah, things can get out of control insanely quickly. But this is a normal Macaw, normal Frogger, normal Baron. So, let's say you are in tier 5 early. Let's say you found a golden Frogger already and a golden Macaw. What the hell happens next? Well, glad that you asked. So let's say the Frogger dies first. Frogger dies. It's plus 4 plus 4 times 3 because Baron triggers it 3 times. So it is 12 on stats onto the Macaw instead of 4, right? So he gets 12. Now the Macaw attacks for the first time. And you'll see how ridiculous things get. So Macaw attacks, triggers a death rattle, and the death rattle is gonna trigger three times. It's a golem Macaw, so death rattle is gonna trigger twice. So stay with me. So the first time it triggers, it's 12 times three because of Baron, so that is 36. And again, 36 because it's a golem Macaw, so it triggers twice. So 36 plus 36 equals 72. So from 12, Macaw hits for the very first time, so the Golden Frogger died. Macaw hits for the very first time, and you have it 72, 72 Macaw, plus the base stats of the Golden Macaw. A second attack, and it's 72 times 3. I can still do this in my head. It's 216, I believe. So it's 216, that is 72 times 3. Pog. Times two because it's a golem macaw, so in the end it is uh, gonna be 432. Two attacks. It went from no base stats, it got 12 from the initial for dying, to 72 to 432. One more attack, and it's gonna get times three, okay, times two. 2000, what is that? 592. And at this point, it outstats your entire opponent's board, and it can keep on going. All of this is assuming that the Baron doesn't get sniped, that your Macaw doesn't die into a poison. And remember, you can reborn stuff. You can reborn the, the Frogger, you can reborn Macaw as well. Like, there's so many other things that, this is an ideal case, but there's so many things that can escalate this process or slow down this process but it shows you that massive potential this can have if your death rattles are stacked on one unit instead of multiple units that's why a death rattle be beast build scales a little bit slower and this can scale so insanely fast because death rattles go on one unit instead of bouncing around with baron so the ideal uh, comp would be to just have two beasts right but you can't have macaw attacking every time because it's gonna die like if it's a 12 attack and it attacks it dies and it, it stops the scaling here is my terry croft i haven't pulled this off yet i haven't had too much time to play recently since in a couple days i'm leaving for iceland so i'm preparing a lot of videos here but uh this is what i would suggest you try out if you want to do for leapfrogger is you can play a mama bear comp crocolis comp gold ring comp you can play whatever you want right and you can transition into this all you need is a taunted frogger right in front then a bunch of death rattle taunted beasts so you want to make sure your beasts are taunted so nothing gets sniped these all can have as many death rattles as you want you can uh, reborn the frogger if you want then the second to last unit untaunted is a macaw so your macaw is the last unit on your board normally people make macaws early right because you want to hit your death rattles early but actually you want to delay the macaw hit because if you hit early you don't really have a high chance of hitting multiple death rattles very often you just hit one or two if you put it late well you'll see what happens and then of course your baron so that is your seven units golden frogger with reborn four taunted death rattle beasts macaw baron so what happens is uh, the first thing that we talked about. The death rattle here dies, goes onto the beast, and it cycles around the whole bunch, right? But there's also macaw in the back, so some of the death rattles are gonna jump onto the macaw meanwhile. And in the end, if all your beasts are dead, all the death rattles that exponentially bounce around and scaled end up on the macaw. So the macaw is gonna end up with, I don't know how many. I, I, I can't do this math because it's gonna be different every time, but it's gonna have an insane amount of death rattles, it's gonna be massive. So the macaw is gonna attack, and the wild loop is gonna start with it infinitely gaining attack that we talked about. If this is a golem macaw with golem baron, it's gonna be absolutely mental and it's gonna just outscale everything in one hit. <laughs> it literally one hit or maybe two hits. So this is what I would call the beast exodia. I just realized that this drawing 
looks so horrible. Without context, this makes no sense, but I hope you guys can follow along. Some general tips that I would give you is always make sure your, uh, your Frogger dies first and it's taunted and then put Macaw second. Don't put, like if you have Macaw Frogger early on, don't put Macaw first and Frogger second, but uh, the other way around. Reason being is if you have Macaw first, of course you can't have any other Death Rattle Beast and that's already kind of risky. And it only guarantees hits the Frogger once, right? But if you have Frogger first with Baron or whatever and it dies, it could land multiple Death Rattles already onto to, uh, one unit and then if Macaw hits instead of hitting just one Frogger Death Rattle it could hit multiple so it's just a very small nuance of course I'm not saying you can't play a Macaw in the middle of your Death Rattle Beast board uh, you can do that for sure experiments but these are just I think optimal lines that you want to like set up for anyway I think that's it there's a lot more math that we could do like how uh, how much does uh, it exponentially scale in this case like how what are the odds of Death Rattles landing but I think that's boring. Yeah, you could do the math yourself. I think this video was already more than boring enough. I just want to give you guys an idea how I theory crafted a comp like this, how I think Leapfrogger can get maximal potential. And so you have a little bit of an idea of what not to do, what to do, and the madness. Now I'm gonna upload and schedule this video from one or two weeks from now. So hopefully by, by then there's no nerf or Frogger isn't removed. And if it isn't, if you're watching this video, go ahead, exploit this and try it out and show me your screenshots in Discord. I have a lot of people in Discord sharing me their crazy screenshots of like massive beast boards. I'd love to see yours. That said, have a good one. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and to give your plants water so they don't die. Bye.